Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel again. In this video, I'd like to talk about some uh, literary devices and also figurative language. After checking a lot of writing, I've realized that some of my students don't use any literary devices or figurative language. After watching this video, you will have a better understanding of literary devices and also figurative language. And it will help you write better uh, essays or better uh, writing. And I should also thank my colleague, Mrs. Nicolette Prez, for sharing uh, this uh, PowerPoint with me. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy this video. By the way, this video is a bit long. I totally understand you, uh, which uh, this video might be a bit boring, but it will help you a lot to improve your writing skills. And I hope you'll enjoy the video. Let's get started. I should again thank uh, Mrs. Prez uh, for just giving me this PowerPoint. In this PowerPoint, we're going to talk about figurative language and literary devices. And uh, if you use figurative language and uh, literary devices in your writing, the quality of your writing would be great and exceptional. So what is literary devices? And let's define poetry. As you see here, poetry from the Greek poesis, a making, is a form of literary art in which language is used for its aesthetic and evocative qualities in addition to or instead of its apparent meaning, poetry may be written independently as discrete poems or may occur in conjunction with other arts as in poetic drama, hymns, and lyrics. Oh my god, what does all that mean? The real definition of poetry is up to you. Now take a moment to write your own definition of poetry in the comments below. Here, why? Why is poetry important? Poetry takes a simple concept and makes it more powerful and beautiful. Which one of these poems is better in your opinion? The first one, the turtle comes out of the water, walks across the sand, digs a nest and lays some eggs. This is the first uh, writing about the turtle. Now let's look at the second one. The turtle breaks from the blue-black skin of the water, dragging her shell with its mossy scutes across the shallows and through the rushes and over the mud flats to the uprise, to the yellow sand to dig her ungainly feet a nest and hung her there spewing her white eggs down into the darkness. You can see the difference between these two writings. What is figurative language? Figurative language presents ordinary things in fresh ways, communicating ideas that go beyond words' ordinary meanings. Here are some examples. It's like a simile. Simile a comparison of two unlike things using the words like or as. Examples of simile, life is like a box of chocolates. The girl is as beautiful as a rose. The next, the next figurative language is a metaphor. Metaphor, a comparison of two unlike things without using the words like or as. For example, my father is a tall, sturdy oak. The hotel is a diamond in the sky. As you see here, we compared the father and the hotel with oak, tree and also diamond. And we didn't use as or like. Another one is personification. The giving of human qualities to an animal, object or idea. Examples of personification, hunger, sat shivering, 
on the road. As you see, hunger can't sit is something that people do. The flowers dance on the lawn. Flowers can't dance, but we give this human quality to flowers. And as you may know, SpongeBob and Smokey the Beer are personif personified characters. Next one is hyperbole. Hyperbole is an exaggerated statement used to make a point. For example, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. We exaggerated a lot. We made it so big, so huge, so important. I could sleep for a year. It is not possible. We just exaggerated. We made it so huge, so big. Or this book weighs a ton. Again, it's uh, just an exaggeration. Next one is imagery. Imagine the imagery. Figures of speech or vivid descriptions used to produce mental images appeal to the five senses. Here, the small pond beyond, behind my house was lapping at its banks. As you see, if you close your eyes, you can imagine, you can see the scene. Or the willow's music is like a soprano. Again, the, the, the writer just uh, used the language to make a mental image and uh, the reader can see it. And what is a sound device? The effect of, the, of a poem can depend on the sound of its words. Here are some examples. Sound device sounds like onomatopoeia. The use of words whose sounds suggest their meaning. For example, the bang of a gun. Bang, bang. You see, it shows the meaning of the word. Or the hiss of a snake. Now, and uh, as you can understand, uh, when uh, snakes, for example, move, they make this sound. And the buzz of a bee, or the pop of a firecrackers of a firecracker. Next sound device is repetition. The repeating of sound, words, phrases, or lines in a poem used to emphasize an idea or convey a certain feeling. For example, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I repeated the same sentence. Or the isolation during my vacation create a situation of, a, of relaxation. Again, I repeated Asian, Asian several times. It, was, uh, it is called repetition. Another sound device is rhyme. I rhyme all the time and I guess it sounds fine. You see the melody of the sentence. Repetition of sound at the ends of words. Rhyme occurring within a line is called internal rhyme if it's inside a line. And rhyme occurring at the end of a line is called end rhyme if it's at the end of the sentence. And rhyme scheme, the pattern of end rhyme in a poem, lines that rhyme are given the same letter. For example, here, I look at the shell in the ocean. I looked at the bell in the ocean. I noticed the smell and the motion were very peculiar to, peculiar to me. As you see here, we have A, B, A, B. It means A and A have the same rhyme. Ocean, motion. Ocean, motion, A and A. Now, B and B, see me you see they have the same rhyme that's why we use these letters ocean motion see me here assonance repetition of vowel sounds at the beginning middle or end of at least two words in a line of poetry vowel sounds are a 
E U O E D sounds. Here, repeating the E eh sound in the words crescent, flesh, extended, medicine, and death. As you see, we repeated the sound E. Eh. Now we have also consonants. Repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning, middle, or end of at least two words in a line of poetry. For example, here we have sh, shush, wish, sharp, cushion, and quash. You see, just we repeated sh sound. Another one is alliteration. Repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of at least two words in a line of poetry. For example, she sells seashells by the seashore. As you see, s, 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 we repeated those sounds. And what is form? The form of a poem involves the physical arrangement of the words on the page sometimes involving rhyme and rhythm. Line is a sentence or fragment of a sentence, and stanza a group of more than one line. Here are some examples of form. Couplet, a pair of lines that rhyme. A couplet may be a poem in itself or part of a larger poem. What is an example of a couplet? For example, the artist stirred some blue and green to paint an underwater scene. Here we have another form, haiku. An unrhymed poem consisting of three lines and 17 syllables. These poems are normally about nature. The first line is five syllables. The second line is seven syllables, and the third line is five syllables. What is an example of a haiku? The autumn wind blows, calling the leaves on the ground to join him in dance. It is called haiku. Limerick, a humorous five-line poem made up of 13 beats with an A-A-B-B-A -B -B -A rhyme scheme. The poem is named after the city of Limerick in Ireland. What is an example of a Limerick? There was a young boy from Kabu who had trouble tying his shoe. He said to his ox, I'll just walk in my socks. Now, all of his friends do that too. Another form is quatrain. A four-line poem of any kind. They are often combined to form a larger poem. Its rhyme scheme may be A-A-B-B, A-B-A-B, A-B-C-B, or A-B-B-A. What is an example of quatrain? A robin sitting in a tree turned her head and winked at me. She sang a song as if to say, I'm glad to see you here today. A-A-B-B. -B. There is nothing quite so peaceful at the sound of gentle rain. Peter, Peter, patting against my window pane. As you see, A, B, C, B. Next form is syncane. An unrhymed, <clears throat> an unrhymed five line poem. The first line is one word that names the subject. The second line is two words that describe the subject. The third line is three action verbs that describe the subject. The fourth line is four words that describe a feeling about the subject. The fifth line is one word that is a synonym or a summary of the subject. 
What is an example of sinking? Butterflies. Gentle creatures. Fluttering, searching, landing. Lovely flashes of light. Miracles. Next form is enjambment. The running over a line or a thought into the next line without a strong break or pause. For example, I'm feeling rather sleepy, but I really don't know why. I guess it is the way the day has spun out of control. As you see, it continues line by line. The next form is free verse. Poetry that doesn't contain regular patterns of rhyme and rhythm. The lines flow more naturally and have everyday speech rhythm. Poets who write in free verse often use the sound devices we have already discussed. Here's an example from May Swenson's Southbound on the Freeway. They all hiss as they glide, like inches down the marked. Tapes, those soft shapes, shadowy inside, the hard bodies are they, their guts or their brains. Are there any questions about figurative language, sound devices and form? If you have any questions, don't forget to write down in the comments below. All right, I hope you've learned a lot of literary devices and also figurative language, and I hope you can use them in your writing. If you have any questions or uh, any concerns, don't forget to write in the comments below, and uh, I'll be happy to read your comments. Thanks a lot, take care, and hope to see you again in my channel. Bye.